Okay, hi and assalamualaikum to everyone, especially to my lecturer, Miss Faika. I hope everyone is good, is in good condition during this pandemic. My name is Fairuz, and today I'm going to uh, present the topic about epi and lateral projection of humerus. So, without any further ado, I would like to start my presentation. First, we will go to the epi projection of humerus. The humerus is one of the longest bone in our part. This is the basic projection that we use um, during examination of humerus. Okay, so for, for projection, the image criteria that we have to look for uh, when we get the humerus, epihumerus photograph. First, we have to look at the inferior part. There is a medial and lateral epicondyle are demonstrated in profile. And second, 0 0.6 of radial head superimposed with the ulna. Third, at the superior part, we have C, the greater tubicle is demonstrated in profile laterally, and humeral head is in profile medially. And lesser tubicle and seen halfway between the greater tubicle and humeral head. Last, Shoulder and elbow joint and the lateral humerus soft tissue are included within the exposure field. Therefore, this photograph is epihumerus. Okay, for positioning, to detect the rotation or the patient position is correct, first we have to evaluate the position of greater tubicle, lesser tubicle, and humeral head. If the patient is in a true epi, then the greater tubicle will be in profile laterally. Lesser tubicle will have seen uh, lesser tubicle halfway between greater tubicle and humeral head. So lesser tubicle must in between the greater tubicle and humeral head if the patient is in a true FA. So if the patient has been rotated internally, so the lesser tubicle will be in profile uh, medially, humeral head superimposed with greater tubicle. So next, uh, how to determine the position, if it's correct or not, by evaluate the radial head and tuberosity superimposition of the ulna. So, if the patient has been rotated externally, externally, ex, sorry, externally, so it will be less than 0 0.6 superimposition. So, then, otherwise, the patient has been rotated internally, so it will be superimposition will be more than 0 0.6 centimeter. You say we have to measure the uh, superimposition between the radius head and the ulna, radius head and tuberosity. Okay, last the appearance of humeral epicondyle to uh, know the positioning. The both lateral and medial humeral epicondyle should be demonstrated in profile. I mean here, the both, both lateral and medial epicondyle should be appears in the profile. So then, for, so then we can say that the radiograph is in a true AP. Index for alignment. Extractive versus patient, it cannot be determined because there is no full border of collimation. Extractive versus cancer also cannot be determined because there is no full border of collimation. And patient versus cancer cannot be determined because the alignment between patient IR and tube are not aligned to each other. So you can see the patient IR and X-ray tube are not aligned to each other. They are in the diagonal position. So the centering point for this radiograph cannot be determined because there is no for border of collimation. But the standard centering point for this radiograph is mid shaft of humerus. Okay, C for collimation at the superior part of this radiograph we can see the structure of clavicle, scapula and humeral head. This is clavicle, this is scapula and this is humeral head. Meanwhile, at the lateral border, we can see the greater tubicle, the clavicle, and the humeral epicondyle. Okay, at the inferior border, we can see the structure of trochella, um, radius, and ulna. 
there is no evidence of radiation protection apparatus seen on the radiograph. Okay, for exposure factor, the contrast that we want to see for contrast is bony cortical outline for thin and thick structure. The thin structure for this uh, epihumerus is we want to see the lateral and medial epicondyle. This is the thin structure and then this is the thick structure. So the bony cortical outline of both thin and thin structure can be seen. Therefore, the contrast is um, enough and the KVP is adequate. Okay, and then for the density, we want to see the bony trabecular pattern of thin and thick structure also, lateral, media epicondyle, and the lesser tubicle or humeral head. So both thin and thick structure, we can see the bony trabecular pattern of it. Therefore, there is no MS change. In, con in conclusion, for exposure factor, there is no change needed for both KVP and MS. Okay, and then we will go for marker. There is evidence of plumber marker shown in the radiograph. So this is a plumber marker. So the marker is in a correct position. It is left side of the body. So it is right at the correct position, which is left. And the marker is also not superimposing with any region of interest. So the marker is outside of the ROI. Then for the aesthetic, the film size that we use for the radiograph cannot be determined because the picture is taken from internet. And but an ideal film that uh, the an ideal film size that we can use for this projection is 3543 to demonstrate all region of interest. If for name, the patient names, date of examination, and place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph at the appropriate with the structure of interest. For in conclusion, the diagnostic acceptability, in conclusion, this radiograph is not acceptable because there is no patient names and ID, date and place of examination. So the radiograph cannot be acceptable because there is no patient names and ID and it requires a repeat that the radiograph needs to put the patient names and ID during the exposure in the radiograph. Okay, that's all for the epi projection of humerus. Now we will go to the next projection, which is lateral projection of humerus. So this is also one of the basic projection that we use um, for humerus. Okay, for projection, the image criteria, first we want to see the, the superior part of humerus, which is lesser tubical is in profile medially, and humeral head and greater tubical are superimposed. So they can be seen because they are superimposed to each other. Next, the radial head and the coronal process are superimposed to each other. You can see the radial head here and the coronal process are superimposed. Okay, capitulum seems distal to medial trochella and radial tuberosity is not in profile. So you can see that the radial tuberosity cannot be seen in the radiograph. Last, the shoulder and elbow joint and the lateral humeral soft tissue are included within the exposure field. Therefore, this radiograph is lateral humerus. Okay, next we will go to the positioning to detect the rotation or if it is in a true a true lateral. Uh, first, we will there uh, we will detect the position of lesser tubicle. So, lesser tubicle must be in profile must be seen in profile medially. So lesser tubicle must be in profile medially to we determine that the patient is in lateral humerus. The okay, next evaluate radial head and coronal relationship. So there are two types of uh, lateral humerus which is first is mediolateral where radial head is anterior to coronoid. Second lateral medial radial head and coronoid are superimposed. So we want to see that the now we see that the radial head and coronal process are superimposed to each other. So therefore, this radiograph is lateral medial projection. So lateral medial is a, when patient is in anterior posterior position and medial lateral when patient is posterior anterior. IR. So therefore, therefore this radiograph is in a lateral medial projection. 
Okay. Next alignment. For a sedative versus patient, it cannot be determined because there is no full border of collimation. And... And extractive versus cancer also cannot be determined because there is no full border of collimation. And cancer versus patient also cannot be determined because the patient IR and X ray are not aligned to each other. Centering point for this radiograph cannot be determined because there is no evidence of on all full border of collimation. But the standard centering point for this projection is mid shaft of humerus. Okay, for collimation, at the superior border, we can see the structure of clavicle, scapula, and the humeral head. At the lateral border, we can see the structure of clavicle, scapula, and also the trochilla. And in the inferior border, we can see the structure of the humerus, radius, and ulna. So, there is no evidence of radiation protection and prestations on the radiograph. Okay, and then for the exposure factor, KVP, uh, the thin structure is uh, for lateral humerus. The thin and thin structure is different, which is thin. We want to see the early crumb process. Meanwhile, the thick structure is lesser to be curled. So both um, thin and thin structure can see. We can see the bony cortical outline of it. Therefore, the, there is no change needed for KVP because there is contrast. Can we see the contrast? Okay, for the density, the thin structure and the thin structure on for body trivicular pattern also can be seen. Therefore, there is no change needed for MAS. M marker. There is evidence of plumber marker shown in the radiograph. The marker is in correct position. It was placed left side of the body. And the marker is not superimposing with any region of interest. So yes, this is the marker. It's a plumber marker. It's in the correct position, which is, which is left. And it was not superimposing with R, the ROI. Okay, for the aesthetic, the film size used for the, this radiograph can be determined because the picture is taken from the net. But an ideal size that we can use for this radiograph, for this projection, sorry, is 3543 to demonstrate all region of interest. Okay, name. The patient name, date of examination, and place of examination are not visualized on the radiograph at the appropriate weight structure of interest. So, in conclusion, for diagnostic acceptability, the radiograph cannot be acceptable, cannot be accepted because the there is no patient names and ID date and place of examination. So, the this Radiograph also require a repeat, which the radiograph must put the patient names um, and ID in the radiograph. So that's all from me. And this is the reference that I use to complete this presentation. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Um, if you guys have any question, you can answer down below. So, Assalamualaikum and terima kasih.